hello, BookTube world. Uh, I thought I would show the books I have recently, the used books I recently have acquired for our library. Today is a Saturday. On Saturdays, I volunteer at the Hendrix District Public Library used bookstore from 10 o'clock in the morning to 1 o'clock in the afternoon. And because I volunteer there, I get one free book as long as it's not over $2 in price. And then I can buy books that I see there. And today, my free book was Adam Johnson's short story collection, Fortune Smiles. This won the National Book Award, was the National Book Award winner. I think this was published in uh, 2015. He also, Adam Johnson, won uh, for his novel, The Orphan's Master's Son by Adam Johnson. He won the Pulitzer Prize for this novel. It says, uh, I haven't read either one of these. Of course, I haven't just got this book, but I have not read The, the Orphan's Master's Son. So, and I bought this book at the library used bookstore, Jesus in America, Personal Savior, Cultural Hero, National Obsession. It says here in the back, a sweeping account of the most influential person in America today, Jesus. Uh, the writer here, Richard Wayneman Fox, who wrote Jesus in America, has taught American intellectual and cultural history with emphasis on religion at Yale University, Reed College, Boston University. He recently returned to Los Angeles to a prestigious teaching position in the History Department at the University of Southern California. He is the author of Trials of Intimacy and Ray, Rahold Nebar, a biography. So I got that today at the Library Used Bookstore. Yesterday, there was, uh, there was a garage sale kind of thing at a local church and they they have it every year and I went there and I found some books used books I found this book Bill Graham presents my life inside rock and out by Bill Graham and Robert Greenfield it says here as a child it says here in the back as a child, Bill Graham fled Europe to escape not Hitler's armies. He grew up on the streets of the Bronx in the dining rooms of the great Catskill hotels. After failing as an actor, he headed for San Francisco right before the Summer of Love, where he founded the Fillmore and launched the rock icons of a generation. Janis Joplin, Otis Redding, Jefferson Airplane, Cream, The Grateful Dead, and more. He was a complex, caring, compassionate whirlwind of energy with whom rock stars either loved or hated. In his own voice and the voices of the people who knew him, Jerry Garcia, Keith Richards, Grace Slick, Ken Kesey, Eric Clapton, Carlos Santana, we hear Bill's story as well as the scoop on the major events in rock for more than three decades, ending with his tragic death in a 1991 helicopter crash. Gritty, moving, funny, and always fascinating, Bill Graham presents is the inside story of the explosive and unforgettable man who created the business of rock. When I am from the San Francisco Bay Area in the late 60s, I would go to the Fillmore, the Fillmore West I think the Fillmore West was in San Francisco and there was a Fillmore East that was in New York City. And I would go to the Fillmore West and I saw groups like the Pink Floyd, Can Heat, uh, Steve, Steve Miller Band, 
people like that. So I got that biography. Well, it's not a biography. It's more of an autobiography, a memoir. Then I also got at the garage sale at that church, Wilkie Collins' famous novel, The Moonstone, which is one of the earlier Victorian detective novels. And I got Gormick McCarthy's Blood Meridian. Now I had this in my library. I have all of Cormac McCarthy's books, except for most recent ones, but I can't find my copy of The Blood Meridian, and so I found this copy. The Blood Meridian, or The Evening Redness in the West. And I found this book called The Hypochondriacs, Nine Tormented Lives, James Boswell, Charlotte Bronte, Charles Darwin, Florence Nightingale, Alice, Alice James, who was the sister of Henry James and William James, Paul, Daniel Paul Scriber, Marcel, Marcel Proust, Glenn Gould, and Andy Warhol. They were all hypochondriacs, and this was written by Brian Dillon. And I found at the garage sale the complete stories of Dorothy Parker. And I found this memoir called Remembering Bricks, a memoir of the Jazz Age by Ralph Burton. So I got those. So that's what I got at that church garage sale. Uh, when you talk about when I thought of Graham Greene's Presents, I thought of this book in my library. This is called Height Ashbury, A History. Height Ashbury in San Francisco is where it mentions here the Summer of Love took place. This was by Charles Perry. He wrote this, it's called Height Ashbury, A History. Also, I thought of this book, True Hallucinate hallucinations being an account of the author's extraordinary adventures in the devil's paradise by Terence McKinney so if you want books on the summer of love about hallucinogenics the summer of love read Hyde Ashbury I think Charles Perry also wrote a history of the Grateful Dead and I mentioned uh, in the last video, I had bought a book on the history of Grimmage Village in New York City. I remember, I didn't mention this in my last video, but this is called Kaffa Was the Rage, a Greenwood Village memoir by Atola Brolard. Uh, also, I mentioned I have been reading the Parisians, Marriage, Politics, and Betrayal Among the New York Intellectuals by David Laskin. I also recommend this book called The Last and by Guard, The Making of the New York School of Poets by David Lehman. It's good to read these in conjunction. Also, when I was reading The Parisians, he talks about the life of Mary McCarthy up here. I recommend her intellectual memoirs, New York City, 1936 and 1938 by Mary McCarthy. I also recommend this book, Dan Wakefield's book, New York City in the 50s. There is a chapter in here on Greenwich Village, about the, be the Beats, William Ginsburg, William Burroughs, Kerouac. Also, if you want to read a good essay on Mary McCarthy, I recommend Elizabeth Hardwick's book, Sight Readings, American Fiction Essays. She has an essay in here on Mary McCarthy in New York. They knew each other and uh, were acquainted with one another. I don't know if they were good friends, but I recommend Elizabeth Hardwick's Sight Readings, American Fiction. New York in the 50s by Dan Wakefield. Uh, there's a chapter here on Greenwich Village and on the Beats. Uh, Mary McCarthy's 
memoir, intellectual memoirs, new art, 1936-1938. You notice back here, it says here, a foreword by Elizabeth Hard Hardwick. So she wrote a, a, a foreword, Elizabeth Hardwick. And uh, I recommend, if you're into the New York poets, uh, I recommend this book, The New York. The last, the end by guard, the making, the New York School of Poets. It says here, uh, Greenwich Village, New York, circa 1951, every night at the magnificent land, hand carved bar and rundown cedar tavern, extraordinary group of painters, writers, poets, critics, hangers on, arrives to drink, argue, tell jokes, start affairs, bang out a powerful new ascetic. Their style is playful, irreverent, traditional, scattering, and brilliant. They mix high and low culture, use their own daily experience as subject matter, construct elaborate word experiments, following complex rules, compose stunning poems, stunning poems on the way to readings. Very few people outside their circle have heard of them. But from these friendships and these conversations will come the works of art and poetry that will enshrine New York City as the capital of world culture, abstract expressionism, and the New York School of Poetry. The last avant-garde is a richly detailed portrait of one of the most significant movements in American arts and letters. Covering the years 1948 to 1966, the book focuses on four fast friends, John Ashbery, Frank O'Hare, Kenneth, Kenneth Cock, and James Schuller, the poets at the center of the New York School. They were both alkaloids and catalysts, enthralled with the bold experiments of painters like William, William de Cooney and Jackson Pollock. Each came to New York filled with ideas that would revolutionize poetry and greatly influence writers, visual artists, musicians, and composers to the present day. I really recommend this book. So those are the things uh, that I have been looking at, that I have been reading, that I would recommend for your reading. I do uh, also recommend this Kaffa Was the Rage, Grimmage Village, a memoir by Atola Bollard. And also I recommend The Height Ashbury History by Charles Peary. I've always been a student of, of bohemianism, avant-garde movements, uh, literary movements like the Beat Generation, Bloomsbury, modernism, postmodernism, construct uh, st structuralism, things like that. Uh, the American transcendentalism movement, uh, Ralph Emerson and. Thoreau and Nathaniel Hawthorne and I'm a student of all these literary movements and poets and writers and thinkers and so that's why I read all this stuff and that's what I've been reading and thinking about and examining and I do recommend Dorothy Parker's Complete Stories and Also, I wanted to mention, if you want to, uh, I like, I really recommend this, Good Morning Blues, an, an autobiography of Count Basie, if you're into early history of jazz. So that's what's going on in my book world. I'm hoping you are having, will have a good new week and a good week of reading. And until next time, bye.